Okay, people, welcome back to the first ever Mafex Play Day. What have I done? What I did was get behind on all the Mafex releases over the past month, and saying that out loud, it's weird. You know how it usually is with Medicom? They solicit things, and then we're trained to automatically think at this point it's going to be a few months late, if not more. And then releases hit, and sometimes there's a few, but it's usually different properties, but... Holy moly, over the past four or five weeks, it has been a flood of Marvel. Again, that is weird to say about Mafex. I don't remember the exact order of release. I just pulled these out of the shipping boxes. But I want to say the Jim Lee team Storm came first. And how dare they picture the correct black costume and then package up the white one. Then it was either X-Force Wolverine or this X-Factor Cyclops that's based on some Jim Lee art. Then I want to say X-Force Deadpool was about the same time as Wolverine and Cyclops. But I know the newest one I've gotten is Magneto. So, it being a group... It being a Playdate type situation, I'm not getting super, super in-depth with any one figure. I'm going to open them up, we'll go over them, look at the sculpts, see some range of movement in places, go over the accessories, and then boom, I get to put new figures on the shelf, depending on how good they are. Will they beat the versions I already have? I don't know but they do look pretty good. Zark! Starting off with Cyclops because, well, uh, it's Cyclops and because we already have a Mafex Cyclops. The old one is unmistakably Jim Lee X-Men, but it's kind of hard to tell here, but this is also Jim Lee. Well, if you're an early X-Factor fan like I am, there are some oddball things. The Marvel Legends figure is closer to what I'm used to. Well, okay, he started off with the yellow X and stuff, but I prefer the blue and white. There, he had glove cuffs, boot cuffs, and a hood going up over the head. With this, no hood, the hair sticking out, straight cuts across the gloves, and then angle cuts for the boots. As far as I can tell, this costume is from this team still being called X Factor right before they move over to be X-Men again. This is kind of a transitional suit from this to this. The only reason I can think of for Metacom to do this is because it is Jim Lee, and they seem to really like Jim Lee. It may not be my X-Factor Cyclops, but man, I still love these costume elements. And bringing this in one more time, the shapes are similar, but I don't think the sculpts are straight 100% reuse. My gripe about this was the short torso, the long arms. That was accentuated by the belt riding high, so I sliced off the back just so I could bring this down and I've never went back and attached it back. So that helps out a little bit, but he still looks a little squat here. The new one's been tweaked in the torso department. I think there's more abs or this has been extended up instead of out or something. You can see a definite difference. On top of that, or well, below that, I guess I should say, the legs are longer on the X-Factor Cyclops, so it makes him overall taller than the Jim Lee X-Men Cyclops. Don't get me wrong, this is unmistakably this era. This, I like a little bit better overall, shape-wise, silhouette-wise. That metallic blue is just popping with the white standing out on top of it. That seems to have a little bit of shading in some of the musculature. You can tell better back here on the back muscles. Getting in super, not that close, back up, get back, there you go. Getting super close, you can see kind of a bleed between the whites and the blues. There's a little bit there too. And I'm sure I can find a couple more spots. But at regular distance on the shelf without all the bright lights, oh, it's pretty. Then the head sculpt that's on it in the package is super nice. He kinda has a very, very slight grin, which is very unlike Scott to be enjoying himself. Bringing this in one more time, I like the hair on the X Factor more than this one. And then this is straight up yellow, as it should be, but you got some gold going on over here. But that also works with the metallic sheen of the overall suit. So, pow pow! I mean, he's just standing there, but... Oh, man. I will point out that there is a slight looseness to the lower legs and then kind of at the hips. I'm, well, there you go. Don't make a liar out of me. The loosest part is this leg right here. It doesn't stop them from standing up, but it, it's noticeable when I'm moving them around. Also, the neck has a slight spring back to it. Push it forward, bong. Push it more forward, 
it stays. It's only in that certain range right there. Yes, yes, I agree. Okay, I'll be there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They can still look up and down and tilt and tilt. Oh, man, I love Moff X tilt. That's because there's a dumbbell joint here and a ball joint down there. So, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. There is a floating shoulder. I don't know what else to call it. I think it may be a ball joint. On a, no, it may be a dumbbell joint back in there because you can come way forward. You can go way back. There's up. There's down because that's definitely a ball joint right there. I can see it. You can't hide from me. So out there, rotate all the way around, and then the hinge comes up to there. Well, okay, so the shoulder helped a little bit. So we'll let the bicep, double elbow comes up to there. Swivel hinge, swivel at the wrist. This, this, turn, go any direction you want to go. I'm thinking there's a dumbbell with a ball, crunchy, arky, twisty and turny, tilty. Oh, I broke it. No, that's what ball joints do. Drop down at the hip that comes forward and back and oh, where are we going there? Out? Not a lot of out. They didn't leave any space for it to go that way. That assembly also rotates. Double knee. Oh, most of the way up. And I always like to point out the way they make the knee joints and the elbows too. You can crank them over and it doesn't break. The inside is sculpted to curve all the way around. Oh, running man. Swivel hinge, swivel at the ankle. The hinge goes back goes forward, the top swivel turns this way, the forward facing pin gives you rocker. And then there's a toe joint. Boom. For accessories in the package, you got two fists, then there's two relaxed hands, two pointers, and two double pointers, you know, for activating his visor. And speaking of that, the visor is actually removable. And the first time I did this, it was very tight. It felt like I was tearing at pain or something. But once I got it free, the second time, it just comes right off. Gene? Gene. And you can replace that with this alternate visor that has the smoke effect coming up and out. Or I should say down and then back and up. And that's cool and all, but I am scared as hell of breaking that off. Then there's this alternate head and neck setup that it has more flesh to it. It doesn't have the costume coming up all the way to his hairline. And on that head, the visor has a slot. So of course there's some effects to plug in. A narrow beam, and I love the transition from white to translucent red. <laughs> then there's a wider beam. Again, the white transitioning down to red, and all these edges, these steps are sculpted on. There's a thickness and then it gets thinner as it goes down. This head also has a removable visor, which <laughs> if you want to use this as a key to put it on and off, I guess that'll work. But you can take that and plug it onto the costumed head. You can take the plain visor, put it on this head and swap this out at the neck. Oops, I forgot about this. The downed, is, is it a cowl? No, it's just kind of a neck warmer, I guess. That completes the effect. Then there's also this head, and it came with its own neck, even though it's pretty much the same as this one. He's gritting his teeth because he's got to wear these glasses, but I like that the reds, mm, I like that the reds for the lenses and the frames are a different shade of red. And check out the reflectiveness. It goes dark and light and dark. One more thing though, this does pop at the top of the neck. You have the Marvel Legends Cyclops. You can kind of fake that there. It's going to need some blue tag. And the blues don't quite match up. Maybe with a little paint? Well, you still wouldn't have the boot and the glove cuffs, huh? <laughs> Next up, X-Force Wolverine, because we've actually had two Mafex Wolverines before this one. First was the yellow and blue, very classic, while X-Force is a more modern take. And... Mm, the biceps maybe re it's a lot of new sculpt and i think even that's been reshaped a bit this is old school ultra tight spandex you can see every little nook and cranny of the musculature even a bit of bulge x-force wolverine is more modern so there's realistic flourishes to it it looks like a dude wearing clothing there's wrinkles there's seams the belt the gloves with some extra detail to them, some lines. I was gonna say the colors of the hands don't match the top of the gloves, but there's actually this seam where the black comes down into the gray. So I guess it's supposed to be like that. And then there's actual boots with buckles. Nice little silver paint hits right there. And it's the same with the back. Just wrinkles like he just threw on the costume. Across the butt crack, you can see some puffiness to the boots and the gloves. And then while this was always fairly clean, 
here there's some extra seam lines right there and the wings the mask things much more toned down much more toned down i think the biggest problem with this figure was always these being blue but more than that these big long straight claws that's why i prefer the mafex brown wolverine they put some curved claws on there it looks much more like the comic books and then this delicious brown color with some shading to it but again classic takes so <laughs> the ear wings again whew. Thankfully, the clawed hands for X-Force Wolverine takes its cues from Brown Wolverine. It's not exact. You can see the difference on the hand sculpt, and it doesn't have the claw cover things. They are, well, I was going to say slightly shorter, but they're about the same length. They're not as spread out, but we'll get to those. Not that there's a lot to still talk about with the figure itself, because... It's Wolverine sized, it's Wolverine shaped, it's the X-Force costume. I do love the black color scheme with that tasty gray on the sides. Just a little bit of red poking out from the eyes and the belt buckle. Skin tone with a slight hairy paint job on it. I always like to see some stubble on the face, but it still works. Again, there's a smoothness to the legs. They're not flopping around unless you really go at it, but it's noticeable doesn't affect standing but it's noticeable one thing that's almost pissing me off though is this belt riding up it's attached in the back but on the front it goes up and down i want it to stay right here but i mess with the figure and it just likes to work its way back up maybe pissing me off is an exaggeration it's okay but i may take some glue to it put it right there. For articulation, same thing as Cyclops and a lot of other Mafex figures. You have your up, you have your down, you have your tilt, which is my favorite when it comes to Mafex. Huh? What? Possible dumbbell situation in the shoulder, forward, back, up, down. Ball joint on the outside gets you a little bit more movement within that assembly. Rotates around if I didn't get crazy. There we go. Hinge out, swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up to there. We were twisting and we were turning. Crunch and back, so good all the way around. Drop down at the hip, forward, back, out better than cyclops some rotation at that point double elbow <laughs> except it's a knee side to side hinge back forward forward facing pin for rocker toe joint for accessories right out of the package fists there's also two relaxed hands and like i showed a minute ago two clawed hands and you know that i am putting these on wolverine because he's wolverine you got a problem with that bub if i'm making threats i should probably take the head off because there's also an angry gritting teeth head and then an open mouth berserker barrage screaming head good grief this is what i had to do to get all these plastic little protection pieces out next up is x-force deadpool and ooh. i really like this one too it doesn't cut as mean a silhouette as cyclops does but I like the shape. Like Cyclops and Wolverine, we've already had a Moffex Deadpool. This isn't a 90s Deadpool. It's more 2000s, 2010s, somewhere around there. A more modern take. And I can't remember where X-Force comes in in relation to this. I just know that, again, very similar shape to the body, but not reuse. That sculpted in there while this one comes around to the front and kicks down. The old one has gauntlets on the forearm and then on the upper legs, the gray one, the seam line comes down and out. On the old one, it comes down and in. Got kick pads while this one is just clean spandexy look, but not skin tight spandex like a classic look. You have your wrinkles. So it's more of a cloth costume, I guess. These are separate pieces sandwiched in between. Yeah. So, if you're swapping hands, be careful of that or the carpet monster will be fed. Am I supposed to remember which way those go? That is way too much work. Then there's also the masks. This one had kind of an animated feel to it. I think that represented the artwork at the time. This one has heavy seam lines coming up and almost a diamond shape around the eyes. Even the shoulder harness and sword rigs are different. But again, that gray is just delicious looking. But bringing Wolverine back in, are they not supposed to match up color-wise? Wolverine's blacks are shiny, almost leather. Deadpool's is matte, like it's cloth. I love the look of it and the lighter gray, but I also like the darker gray here. I just like gray. The thigh strap 
is, I don't know if it's, well, it looks like a separate piece, but it is glued in place or part of the sculpt, something. It's there. The pouch is going around the belt. That is a floating piece attached around back. And then a closer look at the shoulder harness, which I like to pull down to here to keep it from floating up like that. Red X logo and this red X logo. Probably seen it by now. Mine's crooked. Are they all like that? I can kind of justify it as this being Deadpool. A little bit of wackiness in the middle, but that's not like that in the promo pictures. And I'm just now realizing, or well, I'm sure I saw it, but he's got the footy pajama look. The colors just work. This is more my Deadpool, but this definitely works as an X-Force Deadpool as it's supposed to as it's intended to be out of the package i did notice that it has that thing where you pose around a mafex figure and the lower abs get off to the side and it's hard to get the whole body straight again and standing straight up and down so of course it goes right back to neutral position this time you don't know how long i fought it before turning on the camera also a common mafex problem is when their shoulder straps, it likes to go under the arm and kind of hold the arms out. And this is no different. It's not near as bad as their MCU Captain America's, but you will notice that you can't get down. In fact, it's a little bit worse on the older one sticking out like this. But overall, mm -mm -mm. articulation wise, same setup. Okay, that is a separate piece too. It'll fly around a little. Dumbbell ball, some up, some down. Beautiful tilt. Mm -hmm. Mm. Look both ways before crossing the street. Same shoulder setup, but not as much movement. A little forward, some back, a little up, and a little down. It just doesn't want to move around as much as the other two I've looked at. But then there's a ball on the outside of that, comes around with a hinge. And yeah, remember Cyclops kicking way up to here just from hinging up and the shoulder joint? That's about it. Swivel at the bicep. I've already seen this complaint around the internet. Double elbow, but it barely goes past 90. It's not using the same split joint as all the the other Mafex figures or the knees on this same figure. There's no gloves, there's no armor, there's nothing to get in the way here other than the fact that they did not cut far enough up and down around the joint. That is downright unacceptable for a Mafex figure. There's a little bit of flexiness to this, but it does kind of get in the way. Dumbbell, ball joint, crunches forward. Well, even that's a little hindered. Arc back, some tilt, some tilt, drop down to the hip, forward, back, out best of the well it's not a wave but best of what i've looked at so far slight rotation up there double knee let's see if it's any better well yeah that's better than the arm and then the same thing at the foot you can turn side to side hinge back hinge forward forward facing pin toe toe joint toe joint toe joint how is it deadpool's the least mobile so far for accessories in the package there's two fists there's two thumbs up hands there's two grip hands two trigger finger hands, two splayed out hands, two relaxed hands, and then two pointy hands. And like the first Deadpool, I don't know why there's trigger finger hands when there's no guns whatsoever. All he has are these big blades, not his usual katanas. These are chunky. And like we've seen in this line before, the swords in the sheaths in the package, those aren't actually swords. They're actually hilts just plugged in. So when you put a sword in the hand, you just take this out and set it aside and it looks like he's pulled it. I don't know why you wouldn't just make them actual sheaths, but okay. Well, I will say having the trigger finger hand is not bad. You can just go to any weapon you have from any other toy line and it fits right in there. This is the rifle I have this Deadpool holding all the time. I don't even remember what that's from. The hands are easy enough to pop off and then you put, well, you don't put the left hand on the right side, you put the right side on the right side and then the left side on the left it is a closed grip and there's pommels on these swords or, or big cleavers or whatever so those pop off just slide right into the hand and then plug the end back on i think i'll display this with the swords because that does look good and they're unique i don't have a lot of blades that look like this in the package he has kind of this neutral head that you can switch with this big smile laughing head eyes wide open and amazement head or the super angry head it is awesome how much expression you can get just changing the eyes up and then there's storm who i will admit <laughs> looks fantastic i joke about the costume colors all the time my preference is black that's the way i saw it back in the day during the jim lee run it makes sense because that was the color scheme of 
was it all of her previous costumes? Most of them anyway. This to me is the animated style, but as I've gotten older, I realize that a lot of people interpret that shiny costume from back in the day, either white, silver, or black. And as much as I talk about hating the white costume, I still ordered this, so how serious can I be? I love that this is a bright white, but the details still stand out. There's her abs and the wrinkles on the upper sleeve, some cloth folds here and there, these buckles around the neck, some seams at the pants, or at least the top, because once you get to the, I guess these are high boots, it turns into a pearlescent white. I don't know why I was expecting the whole costume to look like that. It caught me off guard when I opened this up, but maybe they're looking at it as, this is a leather type material because it does go down around the feet and then the rest is cloth even though that has a shine to it too and it's the same with the gold this line running down the belt the bracers and then these little stripes on the shoulder pads i've never looked at these as metal before but that makes sense. I don't know why I get that feeling from these, but that's how I look at them. Clean paint jobs to the red X's and they're in the correct position. They kind of angle out. The cloth is actual cloth. I don't know why I expected, oh, I know exactly why I expected something different because on the Marvel Legends figure, it was that, I don't know what this is, but it's thin and it's hard to bend. This has some flow to it. It doesn't have any wires, so it drapes, but if you put the arms out, it still looks like it's hanging. Although there is a slight stiffness, if you have this in flight pose, it will go up and out. That's kind of cool. And then the head looks fantastic. It is exactly how I picture Aurora. She has the lightning bolt earrings and her iconic eyebrows, I guess you could call them, the lipstick and the whited out eyes. That's how I like my storm. And then the hair has a nice flow to it. All kinds of curls and twirls and detail work sculpted in. There is a blue tint to the whole thing and it jumps out at you because of how white the costume is. I don't know if it's actually painted that color or it's the wash down in the grooves to have those details pop out and it just kind of got out of hand. It tinted the whole hair piece. It's actually a bit easier to see on the alternate heads, which we'll get to here in a minute. And while I notice that, it doesn't bug me. It doesn't bother me. I like how it makes it stand out from the costume. For me, it's more this. Again, a belt that likes to float up and get out of position. Because of how tight it is right there, it's not going to come down around the crotch piece. And it is not attached anywhere because of that. You crunch forward, it has to ride up in order to allow movement. I totally get that. But when I'm messing with it and it does that, <laughs> The shoulder pads are plugged here in the back, so there is some movement to them. They will get out of the way of the arms. And then the cape is plugged in between, and it's the same at the wrist. The hand comes off. This is also attached here. And once that happens, you plug that back on, you thread this back onto there. You can see the cloth sandwiched in between, whereas on this side, it looks like it goes up into the bracelet. Well, how about this? Let's thread that into there, plug that on, thread that on, plug the hand on. Oh, okay, there you go. So if you do pull the hand off and everything comes off, thread the bracelet onto the cape, plug the cape, plug the bracelet, plug the hand, and you're back in business. Articulation, again, dumbbell up, ball down, long hair. It's gonna get in the way of looking up, but not down, and then, oh, so much tilt. You gotta kinda angle it to look side to side. Again, the shoulder pad gets up and out of the way of the butterfly joint. Well, it's not a butterfly joint, <laughs> it's a dumbbell. It goes up, forward, back, down. Shoulder will rotate around, but you don't want to do that because then you're twisting the cape up. We'll hinge out to here though. Bicep swivel, but the arm is sculpted to come up and over the shoulder very, very nicely. Double elbow comes up further than Deadpool, even with some puffiness. Standard Mafex joint at the wrist. Dumbo mid torso, ball at the waist, crunch, arc back, tilt, tilt, twist, drop down joint at the hip, forward, oh, past 90, and then back, and out, best of the wave. Little bit of rotation there. Double knee comes up all the way, most of the way, and then again, swivel hinge, swivel at the ankle. You can turn side to side, back, forward, forward facing pin, and toe joint. For accessories, out of the package, Storm comes with this head, just stern, neutral look, but then there's also this head, which is stern, lips 
barely open. Side by side, the lips are really the only difference. But then there's this angry head showing a lot more teeth. And then in the package, she has these relaxed hands. There's a pair of fists, a pair of tense splayed out hands, a pair of relaxed splayed out hands, a pair of gesturing relaxed hands, and then a pair of hands with a peg for power wielding. And for that, there's these two yellow bolts of electricity or lightning. I guess you could call them if you wanna. The neat thing here, these also have these peg holder things that keep the size of the peg hole. Plug right in. Oh, it goes flush against the palm. That's neat. But if that's not enough power for you, there's these hands with a lot more electricity on them. It still angles up a bit. But more than any of the others, I was waiting on Magneto. Mostly because we haven't gotten that ultimate Magneto yet from any company. Marvel Legends has made a few, but it takes some tweaking. To, to get it looking like your mind's eye version of Magneto. In fact, there's parts on here from several different customizers. But even then, it doesn't have that bulk, that size, that Jim Lee Magneto-ness. Because just like that era, the body is jacked. So much so, the head almost looks small on top of it. But it doesn't help that this cape flares way out and adds a lot more mass to the silhouette. This is meant to go with this. And as you can see, zoom in, it's got those same torso beats. Magneto is buffer, but it feels like the same artist worked on both these. Also, the proportions match up pretty well. The long legs, the squatter torso, and you can bring the belt down, make it look a little bit more, I'm gonna say balanced because I like the belt to ride a little low, but if it's here, you have your early 90s X-Men. The costume is showing through these bands. Maybe they're metal that he used his mutant power to form around his forearms. Same goes for the boots. There's costume, and there's costume, and there's costume. It's almost like a sandal, but then you have boot at the bottom. I will say the ankles get a little thin, but again, it's that style. Other than that, you have the muscle body, you have the trunks, and you have this collar piece, which is unmistakably Magneto. Very nicely done with the studs coming around, and it has that sheen like it's metal. So yeah, maybe that is all metal would make sense for the master of magnetism. The cape has a nice sheen too. And look at the bunchiness down here. That's because it is wired. I will never be able to get it back down into neutral position. Fold, fold, fold. We're gonna accordion it back together. The wire runs down the front too, so you can bring it down in front of the arms. Looking very regal. Or flare it out. Again, give them that big old shoulder pad look. And then there's the head. Again, that hair from the early reboot of X-Men with Jim Lee. You know what I'm talking about. But wait, his hair's white with some blue wash to it. Baby blues peering out at you. Little lip color and that's it. Skin tone. There may be a slight... Well, I don't know. That may just be shadows for my lights. Again, seems small, but it's not. And... There's options for that. I probably won't display them like this. The cape is a little intimidating, a little cumbersome. How's that? It's gonna take a lot of fine tuning to get it to look right on your shelf if you want it down and about. But if you're wanting some crazy poses for actions type things, this'll work fantastic. And actually, there's a sheen out here, but it's downright shiny on the inside. It looks different. Mountaintop Magneto, Cape in the Breeze, or Asteroid M Magneto. Was that about this time? Articulation, same as all the others. Even with some hair hanging down, he can look up and down and tilt. Mutants to the left of me. Mutants to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you, Charles. Got your dumbbell joint at the shoulder, comes forward, goes back, goes up, goes down, can go all the way around, and then hinges out. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow. Even with that big old bicep, it's further than Deadpool. Swivel hinge swivel, twists and hinges, and then twist the hinge to hinge in a different swivel position. Dumbbell and ball joint get you so much crunch. Lots of arc back with some tilt and some rotation. Leg drops down, comes up. That crotch piece is a little rubbery, so you can force it slightly past 90. Back and out. Oh, nope, doesn't beat storm. Some rotation there. Double knee, oh, all the way up. And then like we've been talking about all day, twist at the ankle, hinge back, hinge forward forward-facing pin for rocker, 
toe joint. For accessories out of the package, Magneto has two fists. Then there's a pair of open gesturing hands. A pair of kind of relaxed open hands, but not quite. To me, this is his power wielding hands. Then these are also hands painted purple in the, well, they may be separate pieces embedded inside these effects. There it's very white in the middle and then it fades out to a bluish clear. Kind of sharp too. Don't be stepping on these in the middle of the night. That's cool, but it's different, definitely. I don't know if I like it though. Putting the fist back on, there's also these and you can see the fist print down in there. It's slid on. Am I gonna be able to, oh, are those in there forever? That makes for one hell of a neutral stance. But when I think of Magneto, I think of concentric circles just emanating out from his hands. These plug onto the fists too and I'm still not sure I can get these off. This design, not the greatest. These though should just plug right on and come back off. Nope. Oh no. Is it almost too loose? Oh, okay. I get it. You have to kind of angle it in there. You don't punch into it. It goes up. It goes this way. So plug it like that and Oh yeah, that's much better. But you'll notice one thing missing. The unmasked head is cool, but it's better to have his helmet on so he can block those mental attacks. Plus it just finishes off the costume, doesn't it? Unfortunately, this one is just for holding. It's not gonna fit over that beautiful head of hair. That's why it's an alternate head type situation. He's got gritting teeth in there. You can see his eyes and there's a little bit of hair poking out in the back. Then there's also this head, which I get but it doesn't do much for me. I would have liked to seen another head like this with whited out eyes and maybe a different expression. It doesn't do a lot for the proportions. It still looks slightly small up here and really big in the body, but it's Magneto. It's Jim Lee. Size-wise standing them all side by side, it's not what I expected. Both Deadpool and Cyclops are bigger than Magneto. I expected him larger than, well, everybody. But then Metacom does tend to size and style depending on the display, the team, the era. Wolverine and Deadpool go together, they look good together. Wolverine's smaller, Deadpool's bigger. Magneto is bigger than Storm. They're supposed to be within the same group. And then this oddball Cyclops. Deadpool stands at about six and five sixteenths. Wolverine's about five and five eighths. Magneto six and a quarter. Storm is six and an eighth. And then Cyclops is six and three eighths. Then here that is with the Marvel Legends animated series Cyclops, the X-Force Cyclops, and the Mafex Jim Lee era Cyclops. Let's put these side by side and show you that this is in fact taller. Huh, I didn't expect the new Wolverine to be shorter than the Mafex classic version, but still slightly taller than the Marvel Legends X-Force Wolverine. Deadpool is about the same size as the first Mafex version. And then there's Hasbro's take on that same costume. Comparing the Mafex Storm to the Marvel Legends Storm, it's close, but the more I look, the more I like the Metacom. The Legends is perfectly fine. It's gonna come down to if Metacom gives me a black version of this costume. And then, like I said, it took some custom pieces to get the Marvel Legends Magneto up to par, but now, this is iconic. This is the look. If I take this off, <laughs> I may like that better. Or is it too big? I don't know. I don't know. So at the end of the day, some awesome figures for the display. I always have to rhyme on play day. Really, this storm makes me like the white costume way more than I did before. I know I joked about hating it, but I definitely don't prefer it. But having this figure with the pearlescence and the whites and the hair and just storm herself the reds the golds everything looks good still not my favorite but this kicks it up a couple of notches same with this deadpool it's not gonna replace the old red and black but this gives it a run for its money same for cyclops i prefer the cowl and the cuffs but this shiny blue and white how crisp everything is well okay i know there's a few paint bleeds and you can see blue here and there i get it but to the naked eye at a distance that looks amazing am i going to say the same about this wolverine it just looks great but this was what i was waiting for this will be my display piece not that i'm taking anything away from the custom pieces on that that like this storm will find a home somewhere as my unmasked magneto just standing there looking like a badass yeah so what
do something. But this is my shelf display. This is the one I'll pull out when I do pictures or video or or funsy times, I guess. But I also understand that Mofex is kind of expensive to be on the fence about. But saying that, X-Men are my steak and potatoes. I love the X-Men and that whole universe. So I will take every character in every costume. And saying that for the third time in a row, these characters in these costumes are the ultimate versions of that. They just ha happen to be not my favorites. So they'll go somewhere else. I will still find a way in my heart of hearts to have fun with these. I swear.